think you'll agree that the girls have given us another spectacular again today. And for those of you in the elevated position, I'm sure that you'll be able to see quite clearly the letters that the girls have formed at VFA Grand Final 1976. And the juniors in front here have formed the Channel A logo, which will be showing quite clearly from our camera on the craft crane, 370 feet in the air here today. Depending for Dandenong and Herman van der Beek as he and Heinen move in. Van der Beek got the knockout, sharked away by Christo. And uh, immediately the umpire blows the whistle, picks a free kick out of it, and it will be taken by Christo. Christo just short of centre half back for Port Melbourne. He comes in with a kick, and not a good kick, a nervous type of kick. Goes up towards a half forward line, and a good mark by George Allen at Port. Port Melbourne kicking with the advantage of the wind here in the first quarter. They've been playing half a minute. Fred Cook moving across to make position here. Cook and Harper, up they go. It's knocked away, down to the ground, moving after it is Kerr. Up Port Melbourne, pass it back over his head, comes to Bond. Bond had the chance, he gets caught too high, and he'll get the free kick only 25 metres out from goal on a 45-degree angle. Well, you can see the pattern of play. There'll be two players coming in on uh, Cook most of the day. You saw that happen then. But then, of course, Port Melbourne have the players standing down, waiting for just that. Now, so Bond, the Graham Bond, the rover of Port Melbourne, lines them up from about 25 metres out. 45 degree angle, kicking towards the Fitzroy Street end of the ground. There it is on its way, and the goal umpire moves to the middle. It's first strike right to Port Melbourne. One minute after commencement of play, their one goal, and Dandenong have yet to score. Well, that's a big advantage, Phil. Uh, Port Melbourne uh, winning the toss in and kick, kicking with the aid of the wind, which must be worth something like three to four goals. And the weather report we had before the game, Phil, with the wind would be swinging around. So the, every advantage to Port Melbourne in this first quarter. And what a big advantage to win the toss in a game such as this. All right, look at that shot coming down on the umpire from a great height. And something's happened behind the play. There's nickling down here. Thompson and Bond. Thompson and Bond. And umpire Marcy moving down just to warn them, but it's not on. Well, that's the first indication of anything that may happen here today. I noticed Norm Brown looking across the field at uh, the two players. And here we go. Up goes Van der Beek again, gets the knockout, gets it down towards Orchard, who couldn't get in there. It comes down towards standing on's half forward line. This is Breeze pushing it along in front. Breeze getting it down towards that left forward pocket. Goes down in front of the pack, comes out of the pack. Good play by Breeze. And he gets it uh, across here towards Pays. Pays up towards that forward pocket. And a hand pass comes out of it to, uh, from Flaherty to Van der Beek. He couldn't get away with it. Moving in his Dermot of Port Melbourne. And a kick here sends it back towards centre half back. Hibbert tries to take the mark, taps it away, got the ball in front of him, gets it across towards Orchard. Oh, players are nervous here. They can't handle the ball at all. But Bassett comes in, picks it up, then loses the run of the ball. And this gives Port Melbourne the chance through Malloy to get it away towards Holt on the wing here on the stand side of the ground. Moving in as Drusher, down goes Drusher, the umpire called play on, and the ball goes over the line and uh, out of bounds. With three minutes into the first quarter, Port Melbourne one goal. Dandenong have yet to score. The pressure on both sides. And they move. Ruckman set themselves. Stubbs gets the knockout. Comes down towards uh, Crane. Crane kicks it straight into the hands of Swan, the opposition player of Port Melbourne. So here's the ball on its way. Up towards the half forward line. Up they go for it. Nearly a mark taken by Bassett. Failed to do so. Coming through as Christo. He couldn't get away. Taken by Shinners. Kicked it into the man. His own man running past. Kerr will get a push here. But the umpire has called play on. Comes out of the pack to Christo. Christo Port Melbourne couldn't get away. Gets a push in the back. And he'll get the free kick. Immediately looked over the shoulder to see how far the goals are away. Dandy non supporters a bit quiet on it at the moment. Very apprehensive. Before this capacity crowd down here at the Junction Oval. What a big crowd, packed right in. As we have Jim Christo getting ready for the kick. Cook leading out, but led far too early. Now Christo will come in, he'll take the long shot for goal, obviously. Puts it on its way with a win behind him, not a bad kick. It's offline and through for one point. And that takes Dad Port Melbourne on to 1-1, seven points. And Dandenong have yet to score. Players still pretty nervous out there, Ted. Oh, very nervous. We can see from the Dandenong players, in particular, Ray Orchard is a very experienced player. But just notice one thing there. Port Melbourne better not start packing that forward line. All right, now here's uh, Breeze taking it right around the boundary line to the wing on the outer side. He's put it out on the full. Not a good kick from Breeze. And the free kick will be taken out here by Graham Bond of uh, Port Melbourne. 
Graham Bond on the outer wing, moves in now, puts the ball on its way towards that half-forward line. They're too far under the ball, Dandenong players. Holt's got the chance here, couldn't get the ball, has it now. Snap shoots for goal, it's on its way and it's through. So Port Melbourne move on to two goals, one, and Dandenong have yet to score. Well, the David Holt, one of the danger players, as far as Dan Inong is concerned, their half-forward flanker, he's, um, he's kicked 36 goals this year. That's his first for the match so far, but you can see the, the quickness and the elusiveness of David Holt. He got through about four or five players in to screw the ball round with his right boot to put a straight through for full points to give Port Melbourne their second goal. I noticed before there, Port Melbourne intend to crowd a little bit on the forward line there. OK, Ted, and now here's Don Hyde. There's the ball deep into attack for Port Melbourne again. Cook running in there in the picture. The ball knocked away by Harper. And out of bounds to the Port Melbourne forward pocket. They're 2-1-13, and Dandy Dong yet to score. Port Melbourne putting the uh, Dandy Dong defence under plenty of pressure. Norm Brown in the ruck there. Van der Beek gets up, knocks it down, uh, tries to get it out towards uh, his rover, but uh, the ball is taken by Rasmussen. He kicks it back the wrong way, but he finds Hainan. Hainan now within kicking distance. Dummies beautifully. He'll want to kick it. He has to get rid of it quickly. Picked up by Christo. Christo hooks it back over his head. Offline and one point. Port Melbourne looking the goods at the moment and moving the ball quickly. They seem to be much more confident in their handling of the ball than are the Dandenong players at the moment. The kick up by Harper, up towards Bill Thompson. He can't get an opportunity for Bond. He's already kicked one goal. He's tackled by Breeze. Bond picks it up again. A pull around the neck against Bill Thompson, who gets a bit of an elbow from Christo running past, and Bond will get the free kick. Port Melbourne 2-2, Danny Dong yet to open their account. That's Fred Cook, uh, closely attended to by Harper. And Bond from about 45 metres out. A long kick, dropping a little bit short. Up they fly, punched away. Opportunity here for kick off the ground by Christo. And over the line it goes. Out of bounds on the full. And the free kick will go to Alan Harper. A kicking in danger decision there against uh, Jimmy Christo, who did so well in the previous finals match here for Port Melbourne a few weeks ago. Alan Harper taking his time, and now he plays the ball along the halfback flank position, looking for Herman van der Beek, number 23, can't pull the mark in. Over the top of it, Kerr, Travis Pays, the Dandenong captain, gets his kick, good play. Down towards Ray Orchard, leading in the race for the ball. Orchard uh, looking for someone to give it to his court, has to get rid of it quickly. Still on the centre wing, George Allen knocks it forward, picked up by Pays again. A hand pass back to Shinners, Shinners plays it in front of him. It's still in play. Umpire letting it go. Now Shinners over the top of the Port Melbourne player. I thought it could have been in the back to uh, Ian Owen. But a ball up on the centre wing. Up goes Hayden, knocks the ball down for the Port Melbourne side. Swan is there, number 40 in the picture. Can't quite get possession. Travis Pace playing terrier-like football at the moment. Uh, keeps the ball in play. And it's now going to be balled up. Harland is limping. Number nine there in the picture, the Port Melbourne player. Getting up as Hainan again, knocks it down. Pays playing well now for Dandenong. Hooks the ball back to the half-forward line. Dandenong coming into attack. Van der Beek knocks it down. Maybe he should have marked it. Coming through is Dermot. Dermot in defence. Pull down when he hasn't got the ball. A good umpiring decision by umpire Marcy. Holding the man. And the free kick will go Port Melbourne's way to be taken by Dermot. And he's on Port Melbourne's half-back flank. A huge crowd here at the grand final. VFA First Division. There's the kick by Swan. Putting Port into attack. Hainan's up. Can't pull the mark down. Taken by Bassett. Bassett to Hibbert, the, the Liston Trophy winner. Now Danny Dong deep into attack for the first time in the match. Up goes Wright. What a magnificent mark by Wright. And look at the happy Danny Dong supporters applauding that great piece of football. There's the CUB slow-mo. Danny Hibbert putting the ball deep into attack. Wright will come in from behind with superb judgment. And there it is. Now he lines them up. A critical kick for Danny Dong's first score. Wright right in front of goal. Port Melbourne 2-2, Danny Dong yet to score, Lou Wright kicks. Up goals, possibly four. There's the kick up by Bob Crawford, beautiful kick right near the centre of the ground. It comes off the hands of the pack, an opportunity here, as it's picked up by George Allen. George Allen, a short pass, not a good kick into the half-forward line. Coming here is Jimmy Christo, a hand pass to Buster Harlan. Harlan's clear, he runs into an open goal. And he's missed two. Another easy shot missed, Ted, you'd agree. 
two bad misses then. Uh, one from Wright, who had the sitting shot then. And Harlan should have not, not have missed that one either, Don. Right, ten minutes into the first quarter of the grand final. Port Melbourne 2-3, Dandenong one point, Philip Gibbs. Right, Don, and uh, we're just waiting on Harper to take the kickoff. Players moving to the stand side of the ground. A good kick onto the half-back line. Up they fly for it. Going at it with two hands was Kerr. But coming through his pace with strength gets away. Plays it up towards the half-forward line. Bounces into open territory. There's Flaherty moving in. Flaherty controlling the ball. Goes down towards goal. Swings it in towards goal. Where will it bounce? And it's gone through. So Dandenong moved to one goal one. Port Melbourne are on two goals three. It went. So Hainan right from the centre has the chance to put the Burroughs into attack. There it goes up towards the half-forward line, playing many players under the ball. Cooks in there and look, no, the umpire's called play on. All players stopped, even Dandenong players thought it was a mark. And now he's given a free kick to Harper who got it around the neck. Well, for mine, Ted, that was a mark by Cook. No doubt about it. And all the players around him thought it was Cook's mark too, but you can see them. They definitely stopped him, Phil. All right, he's played it across here to Bassett and Bassett now on the left half-back flank. Well, that was a let off for Dandenong. But Bassett looking for the lead upfield. Players pretty well covered. Shinner's waiting behind Allen. Up they go for it. Neither player gets the advantage. There's Shinner's getting up. But he's pushed into the ground here by Owen. And Shinner's will get the free kick. So Shinner's from the stand wing. Has the chance now to put Dandenong into attack. Scores the reading. Port Melbourne 2-3. 15. Dandenong 1-1. One, one, a total of seven points. Here comes Shinners with a kick. It goes up towards the half-forward line. Owen no waiting behind the pack. It'll come off the hands of two Port Melbourne players. There's Hainan coming out with the ball. Gets the kick in towards the centre. Drosher moves across. Tries to trap it. Got his hands to it, but couldn't hold it. He's been tackled by Kerr. And also out there is Holt. But the umpire says holding the man, and the free kick will be taken by Drosher. Well, that only proves that you've got to keep contesting. With Drosher, wide to the centre. Gets it to Crane. And Crane now moves back, gets the lead up there from Stubbs, but now will elect to go for the kick downfield. Sends it across towards centre half forward. Owen behind the pack, couldn't take the mark. It comes through here towards Breeze. It couldn't get to the ball. Flaherty's got it. Snap shoots for Cole, and he's put it through. That's Flaherty's second. Down it on 2 1. Port Melbourne 2 3. Started it. The pack from Rasmussen to Christo. Christo bangs it up towards the half forward line. There's Cook leading out. He couldn't take the mark. He's been tackled here by two Dandenong players. It's pushed wide, a kick off the ground, and he's put it out on the full. That was Bassett putting it out on the full. A desperation kick by that player, and the free kick will be taken by Buster Harland of Port Melbourne. Harland on the right half forward flank. Actually, he's down nearer the pocket than anything else, and he's got the chance to score. He'd be 50 metres out. He can screw this right into goal. And there it goes, but he's gone too wide, and it comes, oh, that was bad play on the part of Stubbs, and he's given a goal to Port Melbourne. He's given a goal to Port Melbourne, and the umpires run up and had a word with uh, Harper for grabbing um, Cook around the neck after he kicked the ball, but Port Melbourne go on to 3-3, Dandenong on 2-1, and here's the replay of it, you'll see the CUB replay, and that was bad play on the part of Stubbs, putting the boot to the ball. Sure, he expected it to go forward, off the side of the boot, and then uh, you saw Cook get it pull around the neck. OK, 14 minutes into the first quarter, and still a very close game. 21 plays 13 in Port Melbourne's favour, with umpire Graham Marcy, the 1976 grand final umpire in VFA. Brown has it knocked away by Stubbs. Comes down here towards Taylor. Taylor of Dandenong up towards Flaherty. Flaherty comes out to meet the ball. The elusive Flaherty will screw it around with the left foot. In towards the goal and Wright comes out to take the mark. Well, there's no doubt about it. Uh, he's got a safe pair of hands, this fellow, Ted. And he's got very good. He's got an excellent half forward in Flaherty, sending the ball down to him. Now, if he kicks this goal, that means that Flaherty's been had a hand in their three goals so far, kicking to himself. Well, this is uh, right second deliberate shot. He missed the first one, scored a point. Let's see if he's settled down enough now. As he puts the ball on its way, he's put it through. And Dandenong won to three goals, 119. Port Melbourne, 3-3, three, three, a total of 21. Me that put George Allen on him and taken the player off him who was on him before because Flaherty is a star on the half forward line for Dandy Dong and at the moment Port Melbourne lead by two points it's down to the half forward line again picked up here by Swan the Port Melbourne centre player putting Port into attack again Crane is up can't pull the mark in a hand pass out of the pack to Hainan Hainan's got time to steady a long shot into the Port Melbourne goal and he's put it through a quick reply to that last goal by Dandy Dong. Great play by Hayden, who was a star in the other finals game a couple of weeks ago. Here's, here's the slow-mo replay of this one uh, coming up. 
There's Crane, nearly took the mark, and you'll see Hainan now get possession of the ball, went to hand pass, and now decides to kick it. Also, Norm Goss has asked me to send a call to Bob Atkinson Sr. We know he'll be watching the game here today, and we hope you're enjoying it, Bob. Jack Payton as well, and Roy Kent, who's a life member of the Port Melbourne side. Unfortunately, uh, these gentlemen couldn't be along today, but we hope you're enjoying the match. The margin of the grand final, eight points in favour of Port Melbourne, 27 to 19. Norm Brown getting up high, Stubbs is there too, trying to come through as Brown again, looking for the free kick. He turns around, but he won't get it that way. It's kicked off the ground on the Port's half-forward line, taken in defence by Gary Crane. Crane of Dandenong out towards Ray Orchard. Orchard turns onto his left foot, a big kick by Orchard, in towards Lou Wright. He's the high flyer here on the side. He's up from behind, can't pull it in this time. Knocked away by Miller, giving an opportunity for uh, uh, Breeze. Breeze a kick off the ground. He hangs his head in shame as the ball goes over the line. Port Melbourne 4-3. Dandenong 3-2. Eddie Melai, the Dandenong runner, in pensive mood on the bench. As we watch the ball being uh, kicked away uh, by uh, Prophet, back towards the centre of the ground. Port Melbourne trying to get into attack. A hand pass by uh, Owen out towards uh, Port's half forward line. A chance here for Swan, number 40, but Gary Crane. Good play. A dashing piece of defensive work from the half back line. Puts it to the half forward flank position. Up was Pays. He can't get it. Profits there. Dummies a hand pass. Then gets his kick, putting Port into attack to the half forward line. Holt is there. Under the ball. And an easy mark taken by Bill Thompson. Thompson now sees a lead from Brian, uh, Brian Shinners. Shinners plays it in front of him. You want to get rid of it quickly. A bad kick by Shinners. Down towards the half forward line. Malloy is there for Port. Gets his kick back to the half forward flank. A chance here uh, for Bond to pick it up. Shinners got it away. Close to the boundary line with Hainan running at him. And over the line it goes. A seven point lead to the Port Melbourne side. 18 minutes into the first quarter of the grand final. Up goes Van der Beek, but Hayden knocks the ball down. It comes towards Gary Crane, the halfback flanker uh, for the Dandy Don side. Gets it back towards Hibbert. He uh, gets it back towards Shinners. Shinners in trouble. A hand pass is intercepted by Rasmussen. A Port Melbourne. He gets it back to Swan. Swan on the half forward line. Out towards the flank position. A chance here for Kerr. He can't get it. Breeze is there, number 12. Running in for it now. Number 17, Drosher. The uh, centre halfback for uh, Dandy Don. A hand pass to his rover, Chris Breeze. Breeze on the centre wing. Running around here. A couple of back Bounces, puts it deep into attack now, into the forward pocket Wharton. position, up as Wharton, drops an easy one, it's on Dandenong's half forward line, Wharton gets rid of it, then he's grabbed, no free kick, picked up by Lou Wright, right a hand pass towards the flank position, trying to come in and get it as Breeze number 12, but over the line it goes. Dandenong has the ball in its attacking zone at the moment, about 45 metres from goal, and they trail 20 to 27, a seven point lead to the Port Melbourne side. Up goes Ian Owen, knocks the ball down nicely to Bond. Bond's on Port Melbourne's half-back line, has a bounce, and now puts the ball into attack, kicking it to the half-forward flank position. But Thompson is there, reading the play beautifully, takes the mark, then runs around David Holt, gets a short pass in towards the centre. Shinner's there on his own, has time to steady. A short pass, not a good kick, it's to the half-forward line. Norm Brown is there, knocks the ball away, and now Port back into attack again. To the half-forward line, up goes Thompson, can't pull the mark in. Uh, coming in is Herman van der Beek. Van der Beek, a hand pass to Gary Crane. Crane using his experience to kick the ball away. Away, but it's marked in defence for Port Melbourne and the half-back flank position by Dermott who plays on quickly to a lead from Harland Harland now on the centre wing uh, should have played on, he's uh, hesitated a bit but now he kicks it onto Port's half-forward line looking for Tony Hainan but the ball is taken here by Herman van der Beek Yes, a great mark by van der Beek then on the half-back line, he plays it in towards the centre Port Melbourne 4-3, Danny on 3-2 and there's Hibbert trying to get through got bumped off balance as he came through and this allows Pacristo, I think it is of uh, Port Melbourne to come in he sends it up towards the half-forward line or back Bassett got met very solidly then, and uh, Hainan's battling away with Bassett, comes through to Taylor, and Taylor now at Bassett, urging him on, sends it around the wing, and Hibbert across from the centre has taken the mark. Now Hibbert gets the lead, uh, looking for Flaherty, up it goes, and Flaherty stayed down, but the ball didn't reach him. Allen goes for the hand pass, it comes out to Bond, Bond met very solidly by uh, the skipper of uh, Dandenong in Pays, it goes down towards the half forward line, the bounce of the ball beats players, coming through, oh, right is brought down to the ground, pretty solidly, here's Ian Owen coming up to trap the ball, and Owen is met solidly now by Frosty Miller, and the umpire will come across and have a word with him. He's going to give the free kick further downfield, with Port Melbourne 4-3, 27, Dandenong 3-2, a total of 20. One Pa Marcy coming down and will give the free kick to Hainan on the half forward line. Oh, it's on behind the play. Prophet Miller having a bit of a niggle down there. There they are. 
There's no love lost between them as the ball goes on its way now. Down towards that uh, centre forward position. Here's a chance. Pick up by Christo. Snap shoots for goal. And he's put it through. So Potman. But Allen coming up. And Allen now will break away. Gets the kick in towards the half forward line. He was bowled over after kicking the ball. But it comes through here to Thompson. Boy, what would Dandenong do without him on the back line? It comes across the field towards Stubbs. Too slow in going into it, Stubbs. As we have Hainan now getting possession or trying to get possession. Being niggled at, Malloy gets the hand pass in. And eventually the ball ends up with Christo of Port Norman. Christo um, up towards the right forward pocket and Bond is the player to take the mark. Crane on the mark. This is getting dangerous for Dandenong. They're 33, Port Norman, Dandenong 20. So Dandenong 13 points down at the moment. Although Porter kicking with the advantage of the wind. There's Cook waiting for the ball and he's tried to take the mark. The umpire's called play on. An opportunity for Porter's West Mass and snap shoots for goal. And it's through again. And Port Melbourne move on to six goals, three. 39 with Dandenong on 3-2, a total of 20. Well, let's uh, have a look at the CB, uh, CUB slow-mo replay of this as Ted Henrys gives us his opinion of the game so far. Well, a great game, Phil. It's a tremendous opening, and uh, you can see the difference in the two sides. Danning have got the ball moving, and they've got plenty of open spaces on their forward line. Port Melbourne are getting most of their goals from crumbs when it comes down to the ground. Big crowd here at the Junction Oval. Car parks to capacity, the ground to capacity. And we've got a very entertaining and hard, tough game in front of us here. Port Melbourne 6-3, 39, Dandenong 3-2, a total of 20, and play has been in progress, 23 and a half minutes. We'll give you full details on Pick a Points competition with Cole Page Ford at half time in the game here today, and there's Drosher coming across to take the mark in defence for Dandenong. Port looking good as Drosher sends it across to Crane, but the umpire's going to recall the ball. What's he doing here? Yes, Holt ran over the mark, and he's giving Holt a 15-metre penalty. So Drosher will come a little further upfield. There's the kick on its way, wide of the centre of the ground. They set themselves in here, coming in from behind with Shinners, couldn't take the mark. It's Dermot who gets it away to the centre. Swan waits for it in the centre, and he's taken the mark. Being held on to by Hibbert. There'll be a penalty here, yes. 15-metre penalty. I don't know what else Hibbert could have done then, Ted, because obviously... He would have gone for He it. would have taken off. No worries. Hibbert had no alternative but to hold him, but then again, that's a 15-metre penalty. You shouldn't impede the player when he can move off. OK, now we're just waiting on uh, this boy, Dermot, to take the kick. And there it goes on its way, right up to the forward zone. Up they fly, and Cook... No, the umpire has called play on. Well, Cook a bit unfortunate. I thought he must have taken the mark, but now the free kick has been awarded to Christo. Well, Fred Cook in having a word... All right, well, here's the slow-mo replay of Cook coming in for that mark. Let's see what happens. Now, it was pushed into his uh, hands. It was hit first, pushed into Cook's hands. So, fair enough. Well, here's the kick by Christo on its way. It's not a bad kick either, and it's through for another one to Port Melbourne. They move on to seven goals, three. 45, getting away from Dandenong. Three goals, two, 20. Swan getting the ball, but it's forced over the line and out of bounds. We're into time on in the first quarter. 26 minutes with Port Melbourne 7-3, Dandenong 3-2. Here's Don Hyde. There's the throw-in again on the centre wing, knocked down by Van der Beek. It comes out here towards the uh, centre wing position. Uh, that was uh, Swan losing possession, picked up by Danny Hibbert. Hibbert gives it across to Breeze. Breeze putting Dandenong into attack again. It's on the half-forward line, but coming through is Wharton. Wharton a bit slow here in getting uh, possession of the ball. Now he throws himself over the top of it. He's tackled by the Dandenong rover, Lance Taylor, and it's going to be a ball up. The Port Melbourne Rovers doing extremely well. Christo and Bond have had plenty of kicks, and this is where Port are doing well around the packs. Up they go. Knocked down by Ray Orchard. The Dandenong centre half forward uh, taken by Bob Proffitt. He can't get it. Miller comes in to put his hip into Proffitt and uh, gives a free kick away. Perhaps a little bit technical, that one. Port Melbourne 7 3 45. Dandenong 3 2 20. Close to quarter time. The time on period being played in the first quarter as Bob Proffitt with a long trajectory punt kick puts play back to the centre wing. Knocked away here. Scouting well is Bond. A great kick getter in this match so far. Goes for a run around the flank position. Puts Port deep into attack. In towards Freddie Cook. Cook is there. You saw then the experience of Cook and there's Christo and Bassett having words. Umpire Marcy quickly on the scene and Freddie Cook giving a massage to the head of little Jimmy Christo. Here's uh, Freddie Cook now. Watch the great experience of Cook on the CUB slow-mo, the way he used his body so perfectly there to put his opponent under the ball and pull it in. 
There's his kick, a long kick. Great kick. Not quite good enough. One point only. Port Melbourne looking uh, the more composed side with plenty of balance, plenty of pace, plenty of teamwork. They're 7 4, 46, and Dandy Nong 3 2 20. The time on period in the first quarter, and we're watching Alan Harper, the fullback for the Dandy Nong side, putting the ball back into play again. Good kick. Van der Beek he's looking for, but he's out of position, and a good mark to Hainan. I would have played it. Play on. Taken here now for the Dandy Nong side by Bassett. Beautiful play by Bassett. Magnificent football. Good kick to the full forward zone. Why the players stopped? Bad because he called play on, but the, uh, the right didn't realise it. He called play on them, but right the full forward hadn't realised that, and he stopped. Thought the ball was going back. Well, let's play underway now as Rasmussen picks it up for Port Melbourne. His kick is not good. It's over the line on the full, and we'll see Drosher take the free kick. Uh, Drosher looking to play on, but of course he must kick over his mark. Port Melbourne 7 4, Dandenong on 3 2, first quarter, time on period, grand final, VFA first division, full of excitement and full of atmosphere at the moment as Drosher kicks the ball to the half forward line. Oh, Miller! Almost pulled it in. Lance Taylor's there, can't get possession, profits behind him, and it's out of bounds on the Dandenong half forward flank. A spectacular leap then by Frosty Miller. If it had pulled the mark in, it'd have brought the house down. Ray Orchard is there, but getting up as Ian Owen knocks the ball down, taken here by Dermott. Gets a hand pass across to Bond. Bond to the centre wing. Holt is there. Over the top, Stubbs knocks the ball away. Buster Harlan comes in. Turns around. He's going to run into trouble as Van Der Beek comes at him. Coming into lender hand is Holt. Holt, the half-forward flanker, to the half-forward line. Thompson's there. Over the top, Christo. Cooks on his own. Christo shoots it into an open goal. And he hits the post. Dandy Nong a little bit loose on that uh, half-back line when the Port get the ball across the centre time and time again. We've seen players running loose and Dandy Nong will need to tighten their defence in the second quarter coming up shortly. Waiting now for Alan Harper to put the ball back into play again from the full-back position with Port Melbourne leading by 27 points. There's the kick right back near the centre of the ground. Up is George Allen. Handballs it across to Dermott. Dermott coming down the ground, gets his kick to the half-forward line. Opportunity here for Bond, number 13. Bond fumbles a little. He's played well so far. Dummies a hand pass. On his hands and knees. Good play. Gets a hand pass going to Rasmussen. Rasmussen into the full forward zone. Freddie Cook's there. Yes. Oh, what a mark. What a mark. What a footballer. What a player. We'll watch this on CUB slow-mo. The ball coming down to Fred Cook. And again, the superb judgment. Now, there it is. Freddie Cook, full forward supreme, right in the goal square. Almost caught a time. Yes, he's put it through. Port Melbourne 8-5, Dandy Nong 3-2. And two goals to Freddie Cook. To take the mark. Port Melbourne 8 5, 53. Dandy Nong 3 2, a total of 20. And there comes the kick out towards Hibbert, who's uh, been fairly quiet. He plays it back to his own position in the centre of the ground. Herman van der Beek with Hainan, tapped away from Hainan, but it comes in towards Swan. Now van der Beek goes after it. Also, Taylor's in there. Neither of those players get the advantage. Rasmussen comes in for Port, and Rasmussen with not a good kick gets it up towards that forward zone. Thompson will get caught, gets the hand pass into Taylor. Now the umpire set a push in the back and Thompson will get the free kick. Thompson plays it out wide, gets it out here towards Hibbert. Now Hibbert on his own in open territory, can play it around the flank towards Shinners and Shinners takes the mark on the outer wing. He's about to go off and the umpire says he can go back and take his kick. All right, now Shinners getting up near Siren time as we get ready to put the ball on its way. Comes up towards that right uh, forward pocket. In comes Miller from behind. He's juggled the ball, but the umpire's called play on. It comes up towards the forward zone. He's put it on its way, and it's through for one point. Breeze couldn't quite get to it, so that takes Dandy Nong on to three goals. Three, 21 to Port Melbourne's 8-5, a total of 53. Norm Brown back here giving instructions uh, to the runner. As we see the ball kick towards the centre and there's Stubbs coming in over the top of them to take the mark for Dandenon. It's a long quarter, we're coming up to the 33 minute mark. Miller's on his own out on the flank but uh, Stubbs has elected to go for the long kick downfield. He gets it up towards the right forward pocket and it'll be out. 
So there goes the siren to end the first quarter. With Port Melbourne, 8-5, a total of 53. Dandenong, 3-3, three, three, a total of 21. Here's Don Hyde. Right, we're underway for the second quarter. Let's see what can happen here. Heinen gets a knockout from the ruck, but he sends it straight to his opposition. Herman van der Beek comes up here towards Allen. Allen races in after the ball. There's Frosty Miller, who's been in a bit of trouble today. Uh, couldn't get the ball. Profit plays it around towards Rasmussen. Rasmussen now tries to dodge his opponents. Gets grabbed with the ball. Holding the ball, the umpire doesn't pay it. And Breeze now gets the advantage as he gets the kick in towards the half-forward line. Orchard goes up over the top. There's... Um, Flaherty coming in and Flaherty streaking downfield sends it up towards the forward zone Taylor can't quite get to it he turns around now he's got the chance watch him get no I thought he was going to get sandwiched he's got the chance to run it towards goal he's kicked it it's on its way it's offline and one point so Dandenong move on to 3-3 21 Port Melbourne 8-5 a total of 53 bad play by Dandenong then they allowed Breeze to battle on his own then Phil he didn't get any help whatsoever all right uh, well the only help he could possibly get out there at the moment is from that dog and here goes Alan uh, Thomas out on the ground. Well, the dog saw Alan coming and ran the other way. Look at this. I tell you what, if it bites him, Alan will say a word or two. <laughs> All right. There he is. The personality, one of the personalities as far as the trainer is concerned, Ted. He, cer he certainly is, Phil. He's been with the VFI and Port Melbourne for many, many years. <laughs> right. All right, now play goes on and Hayden uh, gets possession of the ball. He plays it wide of the centre, gets it out here towards Swan. Swan in turn up towards that right forward pocket for Port Melbourne. They're under the ball. Cook's come out. He couldn't take the mark and it was Stubbs in front who's taken it. Now Stubbs plays it around towards Shinners who's on the flank. Waits for the ball, gets it now and then plays it further around the wing. There's Orchard there. Orchard takes the mark, covered by Owen and will go back to take the kick. Orchard from the outer wing position, gets his kick in, up towards the half-forward line, waiting for it here is Malloy. Malloy uh, goes up and he takes in the mark. He goes for the hand pass across to Allen. Oh, and look, there's a punch up behind the play. Taylor's cop one right in the mouth. And what's the umpire going to do? He's back speaking with, um, look as though Dermot. He can't, yes, he's uh, called the ball back here. You'll see the replay of this. There was Taylor. Taylor started it. And the umpire has uh, decided to ball it up at the centre half forward position for Dandy Knock. Vanderbeek got into the back of Hayden and Hayden will get the free kick. A lot of frustration starting to show up in the Dandenong players game, Ted. Well, there's two. They can see the situation with the game at the moment and uh, probably disappointment as well that uh, Port have got the wind again. There's Shinners with it. Shinners goes to the hand pass to Bassett. Bassett now from the centre of the ground. Gets the bounce in. Can get it right downfield. He's looking for uh, the full forward in right. Right waits for it and has taken the mark. He's not a bad forward, this fellow, Ted. Well, he's a good forward, Phil. He's proven that. And he, well, it just shows you how good he is. Frosty Miller can't get his place back in front of goals. And he's been kicking goals for them. And he's a very good mark. He's kicked one so far. We'll drop it right in the square. There's Miller moving back. Wharton. Uh, but uh, it's Wharton who's coming to take the mark. Wharton of Port Melbourne in defence. Port, 8-5, 53. Dandy on 3-3, a total of 21. Kick on its way in towards the centre of the ground. Vanderbeek goes for the big knock. It comes down here um, with Pays going down to the ground. He pulls it out. No one able to break away, and the umpire will whistle it up. So it'll be a ball up at set a half forward for Dandenong. They've been playing four and a half minutes into this quarter. The second, Vanderbeek getting the knockout from the ruck. Doesn't seem to be able to get it to his own players. Christo was grabbed by the legs, but a pick up by Taylor, and Taylor goes for the short pass, and it's Orchard who's taken the mark. Umpire calling uh, the player back, that's Profit. Owen will stay on the mark of Orchard. An orchard of Dandenong there in the white next comes in with a left foot kick. Not a good kick, we'll drop it a bit short. And there's um, Harry Flaherty, the umpire's called play on. Hibbert gets it and snap shoots for goal. So that takes Dandenong on the four goals, three, 27 with Port Melbourne on eight five. Constant players underway as we see it picked up out here by Swan. Swan sends it right down to the forward zone and it could be a goal. Cook did it so effortlessly then. And he's running rings around Harper. That was Cook's third. Port Melbourne 9-5. Dandy Nong, uh, four goals, three. How unlucky can you be, though, Phil? That ball bouncing the way it was uh, when it was kicked. Let's have a look at the CUB slow-mo of that one, which comes up with uh, Fred Cook's third goal. You watch him shepherding this very well, keeping Harper well out. He could have let the ball go, actually. He would have gone through, but he picked it up. 
Oh, and the cook's been flattened. And it's right on. Harper is in trouble. And look at the players going downfield. The umpires are there. Let's watch this. And it's on. Another player is flattened the other end of the ground. Flaherty's been flattened at the other end of the ground. And there's another one down at the other end. A train has gone down. And Eddie Melee's uh, standing around. In the middle, there's another fight on in the middle of the ground. Oh, look at this slinging match. Flurry has a one into the ground in the hands of the trainers. In this bunch of uh, players, there's another player in the hands of the trainers. And then further downfield, further downfield, we have a big bunch of players. Here we are. Number 25. He appears as though he's had his uh, number taken. And there's a... a and that's the Port Melbourne doctor, I think, out on the field, the, the lady. Flaherty's still in the hands of the trainers up here. And Fred Cook in a lot of trouble. Cook, uh, Fred Cook, what a shame to see this. Fred Cook saying he's right. He's telling everybody to clear up. And now the umpire is telling Alan Thomas to get off the field. And the doctor now, the Port Melbourne doctor, is taking Alan Thomas off the field to save any further trouble. And there's Alan Thomas, the Port Melbourne trainer, going off the field. Listen to the Dandenong supporters. And boy, are they fired up at the moment. Well, Eddie Melee, he's coming back to his position. Fred Cook in the bloodstream. And there's the uh, replay of the start of it all again. And that's where it all happened. Miller will even. Umpire Marcy telling trainers to move off the field. And runners. And here we are, ready for the bounce. And away we go again. Here's Don High. What? Nine, Danny Long, 27, and uh, one needs to have eyes in the back of the head here. And it's on again in the centre. And umpire Marcy with his hands full here. And there's Harland and Bill Thompson to the left of the screen there, having a bit of a pushing match. And the free kick will go to Tony Hayden. Port Melbourne, 59, and Danny Long, 27. Eight and a half minutes gone in the second quarter in a fiery, rough, no holes barred grand final VFA First Division. Port Melbourne right on top of the football situation with 9 5, Dandenong 4 3, with Dandenong desperately trying to get back into the game. There's Hayden's kick putting Port into attack. Freddie Cook comes out, can't pull the mark in, but he gives the free kick away. Free kick will go to Brian Shinners. And there's the kick in towards the centre of the ground. George Allen's there with his Guernsey half pulled off. Must be a new style. It's called the splitless side. There's his kick, putting Port into attack again. Cook is there, feeling no ill effects. But he gives another free kick away. He will settle down, I'd say. It'll take him three or four minutes to settle down, Fred Cook, but watch him when he does. There's the ball being kicked back again. Uh, kicked away by Lance Taylor now. The Dandenong Rover out towards the centre wing and over the line it goes. The ball is coming back. It's a free kick. The mark is being paid. Looks like Stubbs who's going to uh, get the free kick. The other end of the ground, uh, Wharton is in the hands of the Port Melbourne trainers as the ball comes back towards the uh, centre wing position. Up they go, a lot of packs forming here. And Brian Shinner is the Dandenong player with the ball. Plays it wide to the flank position. Travis pays. The Dandenong captain and coach kicks the ball over the line. And Dandenong, a bit of a frustrated side at the moment with Port Melbourne in command. 9-5 to 4-3. 
free kick going to Ian Owen, the centre-half back for the Port Melbourne side. He's on the half-back flank position at the moment. And now he swings play back to the half-forward line. Up goes uh, the big fellow there, Hainan Kerr, up also. Coming through hard is Bill Thompson. Thompson, a long hand pass out here. Uh, looking for Shinners. Shinners now putting Daddy Long into attack again. It's to the half-forward line. And a good mark taken by Shane Malloy. Shane Malloy on the half-back flank position for Port Melbourne. Ten minutes gone, and this the second quarter. And there's the kick back again. Out towards the centre wing, Lance Taylor showing lots of pace, plays the ball. Out of bounds again. Right, well, we're just unsettled, Phil. They're down side at the moment. Well, I think both sides are a bit unsettled at the moment, uh, Ted. And who wouldn't be with about four fights all going on in different parts of the ground? As we have Port Melbourne 9 5 59, Dandenong 4 3, a total of 27. There's the ball coming into the centre, a good mark taken by Hayman of Port Melbourne. Port Melbourne are the more positive side for sure as the ball goes up towards that half forward line. The players move in under it, Thompson's moved in, and Thompson, the man in front, must be paid the mark. They've been playing a total of 11 and a half minutes into the second term. There's Drosher out on his own, but Thompson's ignoring the move. But now plays it across in that same direction as players move into it and has tapped down towards Crane. Crane looks to be having trouble in moving. He's got the ball, gets a short kick in and puts it straight into the hands of Hibbert. Hibbert will elect to go back and take the kick. Right on him was Swan then of Port Melbourne. So Hibbert now plays it up towards Miller, who's crept up here towards a half-forward line. Miller stays back and allows Profit to come in and take the mark. Beautifully judged by Profit. So now Prophet uh, comes across field, plays it in towards the centre of the ground. There are two Dandenong players to one port, and out comes Shinners. Shinners got the ball, he plays it up towards the half-forward line. Miller too far under, he can't take the mark, it comes through towards Owen. Owen gets the hand pass in, it's out in open territory. A race in for the ball as Hibbert comes into it. Hibbert moves away from his opponents, goes for the short pass, and uh, intercepted here by Allen, who got one hand to it. Flaherty probably still a bit groggy from that smack he received earlier. And here comes the ball out towards the wing and will go over the line and out of bounds. Port Melbourne 9-5, 59, Dandenong 4-3, 27. Port Melbourne right on top of the stage in the second quarter, 13 and a half minutes in. Van der Beek and Hainan contesting and that'll be a free kick to Hainan. Van der Beek is getting very frustrated at the moment. And Hainan, cool, calm and collected. Picking up the kicks and picking up the free. And he's right in the middle of you know what. Here goes the kick, a mighty kick. Let's see what Fred Cook can do. He's in front, he comes up over the top of his own man. It allows Thompson to come in. Thompson plays it up wide of the centre. Hibbert moves in. He waited for the bounce, it's eluded him. And it comes through towards Buster Harlan. Harlan with a hand pass back. Comes into the hands of Swan. Swan now will put uh, Port Melbourne into attack. Comes up towards the centre half forward zone and a good mark. A well judged mark with two Dandenong players standing flat footed. And you'll see the replay of this one. As it's uh, Kerr, we'll go back to take the kick. Kerr coming in, taking a well-judged mark. Well within scoring range. And this at this early stage is putting Dandenong in a power of trouble. There's the ball on its way right through the middle. And Port Melbourne move on to 10 goals 5. Dandenong remain at 4 goals 3. Coming in for the bounce once again. And here it goes, a big knockout by Hainan from the ruck, but intercepted by Crane of Dandenong. Crane plays it out towards the wing on the outer side of the ground. Bassett can move in to pick it up. Harland right behind him. Harland went back to cover Orchard and uh, then has to leave him and the hand pass comes into the hands of Orchard. Orchard now moves down the flank. He puts the ball on its way towards the forward zone. Dandenong in a lot of trouble here as Wright comes in, juggles the ball and takes the mark. Well, he's about 45 metres out from goal. He's played it across here to Breeze, who's right in front, and Breeze comes in to take the mark. Immediately plays on, puts it on its way, and he's missed it. Well, that shows the frustration of the Dandenong side at the moment. Complete frustration there. Right, it might have been right, I'd have been kicking for goal, but he saw the lead from Breeze, who was completely on his own then, Phil. But I thought Breeze should have stopped, gone back and had his kick for goal instead of playing on. All right, Port Melbourne at 10-5, Dandenong 4-4. Right, Don? Right, Phil. 65 to 28, halfway through the second quarter. Frosty Miller in the hands of the trainers there. As we wait for the kick to be taken by Wharton, right on the full back line. Just doing his boot up. Doing his puma. As the kick by Wharton, a good kick. Right to the centre of the ground. And the Hayden out marking stops. 
Port Melbourne looking good as they come into attack again down towards Fred Cook. He leads out in front of Alan Harper. He can't pull the mark in. Should have been maybe in the back. Kicked off the ground by Van Der Beek. It comes back to Jimmy Christo. The uh, Port Melbourne rover. Christo, a lot of pace. Gets a hand pass clear uh, when he gets away towards Swan. Swan, a, sh a short pass into the forward pocket. A hand pass from Kerr across towards the pocket where it's picked up by Rasmussen. His kick high into the air. Freddie Cook. Well, I think one can only admire Freddie Cook because he got a heavy, a very, very heavy knock behind the play just a while ago. He was one of the first to steady down. Watch the slow-mo. And he's back playing football again. There's his kick. Cross goal. And it's out of bounds. Cook now getting further attention. Uh, from uh, one of the trainers, and there's a free kick going here, Ted. Would it go out of bounds uh, on the fall? Wouldn't there's a free kick going to Rasmussen anyway. Oh, there's something behind yeah, the play oh, again. Behind the play again. Norm Brown and Alan Harper are flat on the ground, and it's on again. And down goes uh, Thompson of uh, Dandenong. Harper, of course, he was the first to go down. All right, well, we'll have a replay of that and we'll see what uh, happened. Here you'll see the action start on the CUB slow-mo. Oh, see that. That was Harper coming in to Brown and that's what started it all. Now let's get back onto it here as Eddie Milo runs out onto the ground. And Port Melbourne supporters... I think uh, the Dandenong runner, runner Eddie Mealy and Alan Thomas support Melbourne. They should keep right out of these things. That only causes more problems. Unless they're being sent out from the bench. That's um, well, fair enough, problem. Phil. Except that uh, Eddie Mealy uh, got into the thing a while ago, and that's not good to see. I agree. Let's uh, call the score. Port Melbourne 65, Dandenong 28. Looked like a herd of buffaloes there. And, of course, we must remember there was a free kick to Rasmussen in the forward pocket there, uh, Don, when all this broke out. I'm just wondering if umpire Marcy remembers it. I reckon this will be one of the latest finishes we've had for a long time. This is Shades of 67. That's yeah. right, very much the right. same, Phil. Have they got lights down here? Might need them. Well, what a fiery a grand final. Oh, it's on again here, and it's on again. What have we got back here now? There's a trainer trying to separate two players. Taylor and Allen both in there. And umpire Marcy trying to get control. And I don't suppose you can blame the umpire because this is happening behind the plate. It's completely out of his control if we can say that, Phil, because these things happening all over the field, he can't have eyes in the back of his head. And uh, they, this was quite obvious right from the start that things were going to develop. Not Probably not as bad as this. Here's a number being taken back here. Tony Hainan's number has just been taken by one of the boundary umpires by the look of it. Was... You see, I think yes, if, well... if some of the numbers are taken, I think this will settle things down. Nobody's been reported up until the stage by the look of things. Oh, I think there's been a couple, Don. Dermot had his Has number there? taken in the last uh, fracas there, Don, and uh, there we saw umpire, boundary umpire Colin Walker taking Tony Hainan's number. Well, no one wants to leave this telecast. <laughs> this is the, the grand final between Port Melbourne and Dandenong. Alan Thomas, the uh, Port Melbourne trainer, being told to leave the ground. And Eddie Mealy, as he comes back to the box here, uh, he's getting a bit of attention from the supporters over the fence, verbally. At the other end of the ground, two players on their own, uh, Prophet and Miller, and uh, they're being very good boys which is unlike the temperament of both of them. I agree with you, Tom, but they're just probably passing the time of day up there. There's nothing they can do about it. Being up the other end of the field, and uh, they're going to be very strong opponents before the day is out. Port Melbourne oh. at 10-5, 65, leading Dad in on in the grand final, 4-4, 28. He's, he's, he's given the free kick, kick. Yeah. that's right, in the left forward pocket to Rasmussen. All right, Don, it's yours. Thank you, Bill. Rasmussen now kicks in towards goal for the Port Melbourne side. It's nice to see some football started again, but he's missed it. Only one point. Let's hope that both sides now, uh, so far as they're concerned, a bit of sanity enters into it, and they settle down to start uh, playing football again.
Port Melbourne 10 6 66, Dandenong 4 4 28. Now the ball about to be put back into play by uh, Bill Thompson. It is kicking off, or is it Alan Harper? Alan Harper, who's been uh, one of the feature attractions here today, kicks the ball away, and it runs over the line eventually, and we're waiting for the ball to be put back into play again from the out-of-bounds position. And uh, behind the play, Cook and Harper jostling as the ball is thrown in. Knocked down by Stubbs, the Daniel Ruckman, and Holt pushes uh, Taylor in the back, and uh, Lance Taylor will get the free kick. As Taylor's kicked down towards the centre. Brian Shinner's there. He can't pick it up. Over the line it goes again. Port Melbourne, 10 6 66 Dandenong on 4 4 28. Getting back on his feet is Dermot. As the ball is thrown in again. Knocked down by Stubbs. Opportunity for Brian Shinner's. He can't get it. Taken here by uh, Shane Malloy. And Malloy's going to get the free kick. Malloy on the centre wing. With Port Melbourne 66 leading Dandenong 28. Malloy from the centre wing putting the ball into the Port Melbourne attacking zone again. Big pack of players up behind the packets. Holt trying to run in. He can't get it. Chris Breeze is there. The Dandenong Rover plays it high into the air. Not a very good kick. Appealing for the mark was um, uh, Bassett, but it's taken by Harlan. Harlan to Norm Brown. Norm Brown, the Port Melbourne captain. A good shot in towards goal. It could be through. That's through for four points. Port Melbourne go further ahead. Well, once again, we saw, find that Port Melbourne are the side that uh, settles down much quicker after that big delay we had there with all those incidents. And there we saw uh, Norm Brown, the player who was fouled just a while ago, coming through with a beautiful shot for goal and get a through for full points to take Port Melbourne onto 11-6, Dandenong on 4-4. A very handy lead uh, by uh, Port Melbourne in this game so far. And we've been playing 12. We've been in the quarter's been in progress, 23 minutes, of which we've had about 15 minutes of play. Well, it's Dandenong into attack again, but the strong defence of Port Melbourne keeps them out as Wharton takes the mark. He kicks the ball back and towards the centre. Stubbs is there, knocks the ball down and holds his head as it's onto the Dandenong half-forward line. Brian Shinners, a hand pass to Breeze. Breeze, a short pass in towards right, and it's right's mark. A good passage of play by Dandenong, who have been outmanoeuvred for most of the game by the better teamwork of Port Melbourne. Wright has already kicked one goal, and Dandenong need a goal desperately here. They're trailing 28 to 72 at the moment. Wright is only 45 metres out on a slight angle and a critical kick coming up. Now he's missed it. One point. Dandenong 29 and Port Melbourne 72 as we move to the 23 and a half minute mark in the second quarter. OK, uh, Don, now we're just waiting on the kickoff to be taken. From but he doesn't screw it enough. Drosher. Now, Drosher has marked it right on the behind post. Well, it'll be a good goal if he kicks it from here. Another miss. And Danny Long cannot do a thing right. Let's check the time in the second quarter. 35 minutes gone. Danny Long 5-6, Port Melbourne 12-8. They kick off by Wharton. A long kick straight down the ground. Holt is there, and he takes the mark. Good timing, and he gets a hand pass to George Allen. Allen plays on quickly down towards the half forward line. Coming in under the ball is Kerr. Looked like a push in the back. Brian Shinners. Shinners has been one of Dandy Long's better players. Out towards Gary Crane. Crane uh, on the centre wing. A hand pass. Out towards the centre wing. It's taken here by Drosher. Drosher towards it. And a Dandy Long mark. Right, now we're just waiting on Orchard to come in from the right half-forward flank position. Puts the ball on its way. It's not a bad kick either. Right up to the gold square. Up they fly for the Port Melbourne mark. And it was taken by uh, Wharton. Dandy on 5-6, 36. Trailing Ports, 12-8, a total of 80. Wharton for the kick. This will be a 40-minute quarter, I reckon. We're at 36 minutes now. And there it goes straight into the hands of Bob Prophet at centre half-back. They're doing it at will, Port Melbourne. A huge crowd here at the Junction Oval. As the ball goes on its way, floats right up. There's three Dandenong players there. Who'll come out with it? Hainan. And Hainan now goes downfield. Harper moves back with um, Cook. There's Brown with the ball. He snaps shoots for goal, but he's put it through for one point. Which takes Port Melbourne onto 12 goals, 9. 81, Dandenong 5, 6, 36. 
Well, Harper now. Well, Miller's coming off. He's been limping. Well, has the message gone out? No, I don't think he is coming off. Eddie Miller, Milo went out to him. And here's the chance now for Harlan to take the long shot for goal. And he's put it through for another point to Port Melbourne to take them on to 82. Harrington stripping. And it looks as though he'll repace uh, Frosty Miller. Danny on 5-6, Port Melbourne 12-10. And Crane may be the player coming off. The two trainers are out talking with Crane down the other end. And Crane's the one. And there goes the ball up towards the half-back line. And the mark has been taken out here by Bassett. Yes, Crane is the player coming off. But he wasn't moving freely earlier as Travis Pays comes in to take the mark on the wing on the outer side of the ground. There's Orchard waiting for it, and Orchard, Taylor, no, he doesn't take the mark. His opponent thought he'd marked it. He hand passes across here and puts Taylor under the hammer. There's Allen trying to get away. Allen couldn't do, uh, oh, a free kick. Yes, it'll be a free kick to Bond. Well, Taylor was put right under the hammer then. And there's Gary Crane limping as he moves off the field. As it comes in towards the centre of the ground now, up go two port players, and Hainan is the player to pull in the mark. They've been playing 38 minutes. Flaherty got one in the comic cuts. As the ball goes up towards centre half forward, up uh, goes Cook, fails to take the mark. There's a push right in front of the umpire, and Harrington will get his first kick. Holds the small of the back too, uh, Harrington. As he looks upfield, looks for the lead. Pays making a lead across from the centre of the ground. He's got the ball. Now, will he get around his opponent? He's very slow, uh, Travis Pays, as it comes in towards the centre. Hibbert's wanted, and Hibbert comes in to take the mark. Hibbert right in the centre of the ground at the 37 and a half minute mark. 38 and a half minute mark. There was nearly a clash of personalities as Allen comes in. Breeze right behind Allen. Allen now passes it downfield, and this will be another Port Melbourne mark to be taken by Kerr. Kerr now goes for the short pass across towards Harland. Harland just grabbed that one in at centre half forward. Well, Port looking good again as they approach the goal. Port Melbourne 12 10 82. It's dropped a bit short. Forced down to the ground by Harrington. Shinners goes over the ball. And there's Holt comes out with it. Holt under pressure, kicks the ball, and it'll go down to the pocket and over the line and out of bounds. Andy Nonga 5 6 36 to Port Melbourne's 12 10. A total of 82. And they've been playing 39 minutes in the second quarter. Well, now, here's Holt coming out with the ball. He's got the chance. He's dragged down to the ground. The umpire called play on. And it was a 39 and a half minute uh, quarter with Port Melbourne. Now, there's right up in the ruck. He went for the knockout, but it comes down here. The chance now for Reid to get into it. He's under the pack and will get the free kick. So Terry Reid gets up, gets a hand pass to Harrington, gets it across to his other reserve. Harrington now straight downfield towards the full forward zone, but coming in here is Wharton to take the mark in defence for Dandenong. Now there's a Port Melbourne player warming up on the boundary line. Hulbert is warming up on the boundary line for Port. There it comes into uh, the flank, and it's Reid again to take the mark. Well, he covered himself in glory with five goals last week. Let's see what he can do now. But even with five goals from Reid in this quarter, it wouldn't get them up to Port Melbourne score. A magnificent floating punt kick up towards the forward zone, and again, Wharton comes out to take... No, it's a free kick to Wharton. Prophet took the mark, but Wharton uh, got the shove and gets the free. All right, there goes out towards the flank. Dandenong with the advantage of the wind, and Reid coming in again. This will be three kicks in one minute. This is how he performed last week when he came on, Phil. All right, now, he's out on the right half-forward flank, a long way out from goal. The wind could uh, drag it in, but it's dropping pretty short. Travis Pays comes in, and Pays has taken the mark. Pays takes the mark, 30 metres out from goal, right in front. So Dandenong have every opportunity of scoring and reaching just ahead of the halfway mark of the Port Melbourne score. Well, Travis Pays, the captain and coach of Dandenong, lines them up, puts the ball on its way, and I think he might have missed it. Yes, one point only is the result to take Dandenong under 5-7 with Port Melbourne on 12 goals 10. Here's Wharton now with the kick onto the half-back line on the outer side of the ground. Up they fly for it, punch down to the ground, comes through here, and there's Reid again with it. Bangs it down towards the forward zone, and Van der Beek has taken the mark right near the goalpost. 
They'll put him on a very sharp angle down here. Well, he was right at the goalpost, Ted. That's right. He was just wide at the goalpost, pretty well on the line. So he has to go right pretty well in line with the boundary line. He's telling the umpire not to be silly. And he's put him right around on that boundary line. Well, it's a, it's the first time that uh, Van der Beek has had to... Uh, a by a hand signal. He's put it right across the face of the big sticks and put it through for one point. And so he's complaining to the umpire about being on such an angle. Doesn't want to talk to him now. <laughs> He'll end up getting arrested. Because uh, Herman is um, in the Victoria Police Force. We're dated on 5-8. 38 to Port Melbourne's 12-10. A total of 82. And they've been playing three minutes in what has been a fairly quiet opening considering or a quiet opening to this quarter considering uh, the action we had in the first half of the game now unable to break away with the ball as it's dribbled pretty close to the boundary line it will be thrown back into play well Dandenong at the moment uh, have two players off the ground Harper and Crane and they have other players out there carrying injuries now after that hectic first half of the game well, another throw in to be affected on the wing on the outer side of the ground at the four-minute mark into the third quarter. Owen in the ruck, and Owen gets the tap out nicely. It comes out further afield towards Allen. Allen now, while Port Melbourne plays it across the centre of the ground. Here's Stubbs coming downfield, and Stubbs traps the ball, or tries to. Look at him, he's having a lot of trouble trying to uh, control the ball. Norm Brown was limping as he came down, but Stubbs now eventually ends up with it. But there's Owen coming in, he tried to smother it. The chance now, Flaherty can get possession of the ball, he's got the chance. Wharton's brought down to the ground, and he'll get the free kick. Wharton gets the free kick in that last line of defence for Port Melbourne at the four and a half minute mark. Port Melbourne 12-10. Norm Brown's called for runner. Dandenong 5-8. Here it comes onto the half-back line. Holt tried to take the mark, couldn't do so. And this is where Port are winning out. As soon as the ball hits the ground, they've got a player there ready to uh, pick it up. Now here's um, Flaherty screwing it towards goals. It's offline and one point again is the result. There's been a change in the Port Melbourne side. Yes, Norm Brown, who we noticed was limping quite badly. Uh, Phil has come off the ground and his replacement is Colbert, number 28 of Port Melbourne. A big loss for Port Melbourne. Fortunate for them, they hold a very handy lead. Port Melbourne, 12-10, uh, Dandenong 5-9. Here's Don Hyde. Well, that was Heinen getting up very high and pulling down one of the marks that he pulled down so often in the other finals match. And Port Melbourne 82 to Dandenong 39. Hayden kicks it to the centre wing. Up as Brian Shinners. Can't mark it. Stubbs is there. Gets rid of it. Then he's grabbed. Play on. Stubbs comes in again. Gets a hand pass going to Terry Reid. Reid loses possession to Dermott. But Reid will get the free kick. This will be Reid's fourth kick since he came on at the start of this quarter. So that's almost a kick a minute. Into the full forward zone. Van der Beek tries to knock the ball away behind the pack by Orchard. Orchard hooks it back to the Dandenong goal. Offline. And a throw in to take place. 82 to 39. Port Melbourne in command, as they have been for most of the game. Eddie Meli coming in for some uh, not good applause from the Port Melbourne supporters as the ball is knocked down here towards the pocket. A chance for Travis Pays, who hasn't been a very effective player today. Kicks it high into the air. Danny Long in attack here. But uh, they're falling down badly uh, in, the, in their forward line and it's kicked away by Ian Owen. Upfield it comes towards George Allen, uh, well shepherded by Prophet to the centre wing and uh, Kerr is there to take the mark. Kerr now from the centre wing position putting Port Melbourne into attack. The ball to the half forward line. Up is Harlan trying to knock the ball away and the free kick will go to Bill Thompson, a very strong defender. He kicks the ball into the set player on his own here for Dandenong is Lance Taylor. Taylor now onto his right foot, swinging play to the Dandenong full forward zone. Who's there to take it? Up is Van der Beek. He didn't pull the mark in. Taken here by George Allen. His hand pass goes astray. It's still in front of the Dandenong goal. Van der Beek is there. George Allen tries to kick it away. It comes out here to Lance Taylor. Taylor, the Dandenong Raver, shoots it in towards goal. And Dandenong have a goal on the board. There's an to the half forward line and Bill Thompson is there. Thompson a hand pass to get the ball to Brian Shinners. Shinners has time to steady and put Dandenong into attack. A player on his own is Orchard. Uh, the ball kicked over his head and is taken now in defence by Ian Owen and the Port Melbourne defender shoots the ball in towards the centre and the mark is taken by Bond. Now Bond plays on quickly under pressure. 
kicks it towards Harland, uh, knocked away by Bassett from Harland. Harland recovers quickly, knocks the ball in front of him, then Breeze kicks it off the ground. Danny Long into attack now, but it's taken here by um, George Allen. Allen down towards Holt on the half forward line, punched away from him by Thompson into the centre, trying to get it there was Swan, not able to do so. Now he comes in again, a hand pass to Rasmussen, good play by Port Melbourne, in towards Fred Cook, who comes in from behind, can't pull the mark in. Drosh is there. Cook. Should have got the free, perhaps. He's playing the ball still on his hands and knees, and the players are saying he's in possession. Well, now, Ted, uh, probably uh, Fred Cook was in possession there. Well, he was trying to gain possession of the ball. He wasn't laying over. He was moving with it. Well, play uh, underway again, and it's kicked away uh, frantically by Dandenong out towards the halfback flank position and on Port Melbourne's half-forward line. A courageous effort by Fred Cook to get possession there. I've never seen a player run so far on his hands and knees. There's the throw in. Knocked down. Into the pocket position. A chance here for Shinners. Christo will get the free kick. Jimmy Christo. Having his ninth kick. He started the game very well, but he went quiet in that second quarter, Don. Yes, Ted. He's got uh, two goals to his credit. And Port Melbourne are leading 12-10 to Dandenong 6-9. Dandenong playing better in this quarter with positional moves they've made, but Port Melbourne now attacking into the full forward zone. Offline, out of bounds on the full, and the free kick will go to Drosher. Drosher playing a fullback now in place of the injured Harper, who went off at half time with a suspected um, a heavy jaw injury. And here's the kick coming back towards the centre wing. Faraday's there. He can't get it. It comes to Breeze, who fumbles at the crucial moment, allowing George Allen to pick it up. And Allen of Port Melbourne puts it to the half-forward line. It's all dandy long here, but uh, their ball handling not as uh, sure as Port Melbourne's until Taylor picks it up, gets a hand pass to Pays. Pays of dandy long to watch it. Watch it drops an easy mark. Oh. Holding the ball. Well, Port Melbourne at 12, 10, 82. Dandenong, 6, 9, 45. Here it comes out towards Harland. Harland on the stand wing position. He pushes the ball along in front of him. He kicks it off the ground now up towards Holt. He has every opportunity of getting it. He's pushed over the line. The umpire says it's in the back and the free kick will be taken by Holt. Harrington down there. The umpire moving in to indicate where the mark is. And right, the umpire's between them and they're having a slap at one another. And another push from Stubbs. A lot of frustration in the game for Dandenong. They're 6 9 45. Port Melbourne 12 10. A total of 82. We're at the 11 minute mark. Holt now moves in, puts the ball on its way and screws it right across the face of the big sticks. There's Cook waiting for it. It comes off the hands of the pack. No one able to take the mark. Thompson passes it out wide. Comes out towards right. Wright's in trouble. And the umpire says it will be thrown back into play. Well, everybody waiting for one of the teams to move. If Port get on top in this quarter, Dandenong are really gone. Comes out wide. Breeze grabs his opponent. Coming through here is Rasmussen. Rasmussen now puts it up to the pocket. And the mark has been taken by Christo. Christo deep in that left forward pocket. Right in line with the behind of goal posts at almost impossible angle. Thompson on the mark. And the wind will blow against the flight of the ball from the southern end. And here we go. He puts the ball on its way. It's not a bad kick. The umpire moves across, and it's one point only to take Port Melbourne onto 12 goals, 11, 83, with Danny Nong, six goals, nine, a total of 45 at the 12 minute mark. David Drosher to take the kickoff with Port Melbourne, their 17th man on the ground. And uh, oh, the umpire, he hand passed it out of the square, and he must kick it. I didn't know about that being an old full back, Ted. Well, very fortunately for him, he's been given his chance to kick it off again. But, but he must uh, do it with a kick. Well, here we go, and it's on its way. And there's Stewart coming in, and Stewart got his hands to it, then the boot to it, Taylor rather, plays it out wide. Reed's made his first mistake since he came on, but he gets it across to Taylor. Taylor now to Hibbert. Hibbert looking further downfield, and he's played it up here towards Herman van der Beek, who failed to take the mark. And here's the show now for Ella Prophet to get it away. Prophet towards the half-back line. Moving in here is Swan. Swan brought down to the ground. Crowd yell out holding the ball. And Bond is the player to try and pick it up. But the umpire says around the neck. And the free kick will be taken by Wright. 
And there's um, Swan on the ground in the hands of the trainers now. As a hand pass attempted, comes, uh, ends up with Orchard, gets rid of the ball after being tackled. Ian Owen after it. And Owen now with a further hand pass gets it to Malloy. Malloy plays it right downfield. Rock comes in and Wright gets a push in the back and the umpire will give Wright the free kick right where the horse has been. He's gone for the hand pass, gets it across to Shinners. Shinners up towards the forward zone, but look at this. That's Profit coming out to take the mark. And Profit now with the kick into the centre of the ground. Up goes Shinners, and Shinners pulls down the mark. He doesn't waste any time. Gets his kick in, back to the forward zone. And they're falling down forward now, Dandenong. Frosty Miller coming in far too late. They're being annihilated down there, Phil. Oh, Wharton is playing right over the top of them. Here goes the kick, and a good mark by Travis Pays, and desperation threw himself into it. Now here's the runner going out onto the field, and also the trainer for uh, Port Melbourne. And I suggest there might be a change here, as we have this terrific kick from Travis Pays, right down field, he's put it through for a goal. So Dandy Long won to 51 points with Port Melbourne, 83. Uh, they took him to the gate on a stretcher, but he got up off the stretcher, and uh, walked out through the turnstiles and he's being taken to a hospital at the moment but he did walk out through the turnstiles with a very swollen face we understand that he's got a suspected broken jaw and the hand was bandaged as well well now here's Holt uh, coming in and Holt gets the ball screws it around towards the wing on the stand side of the ground and the player to take the mark is Kerr of uh, Port Melbourne Dandenong 7-10 trailing Port Melbourne 12 goals 11 Port Melbourne seem to be saving themselves for a world win finish. Because Dandenong have the advantage of the wind here in this quarter. And there's the knockout by Wright, but it goes straight into the hands of Owen of Port Melbourne. Owen up towards the half forward line. Here's Thompson to come in. And Thompson now with a pass to Pays. Pays back to Thompson. And Thompson now downfield. He's been a great player for Dandenong. Two Dandenong players went up. Miller and Vanderbeek then. And down uh, Reed puts his opponent down. The umpire's blowing a whistle, I think, as he goes down the field. And the free kick will be taken uh, against uh, Reed by Wharton. So Port Melbourne 12 11 83, Dandenong 7 10 52. Here's Don Hyde. I was watching uh, Herman Vanderbeek there uh, take the point that he's a young uh, player, but uh, you know, I think he should have done more today, Ted. He's, he's in the, big... the game quite well in a couple of those centre bounces, but he's done nothing since. Well, not. he's in the forward line and the ball's getting down to him a lot, but he's uh, not doing anything when it gets down there. And uh, Dandenong are falling down badly in front of goal as the ball comes back again. Uh, taken here by Breeze. He plays the ball in front of him, he gets the free kick. 83 to 52, Port Melbourne in front still, as they've been for most of the day. And uh, Dandenong, though, uh, with a much better third quarter, are fighting back towards Breeze. Uh, rather Taylor from Breeze, and an easy mark. And a bad uh, piece of play by Port Melbourne to allow Taylor to be unattended. Uh, he's within kicking distance with the Breeze behind him, and a goal here will certainly lift Dandenong's hopes in the third quarter. It's a good kick. Yes. 10-58, Danny Dong, Port Melbourne, 12-11, 83. Uh, he knocks the ball away, right is there, knocks it out towards Bassett, Bassett pulled around the neck, and a free kick to the Danny Dong halfback flanker. Bassett on the centre wing. Groggily gets back to his feet, and Danny Dong with a chance to come into attack, Travis Pays creating the loose man on the half forward line. Pays a bit slow, it gets possession, a poor kick, a shocking kick for a captain. Downfield it comes, a push in the back, and the free kick will go Port Melbourne's way yeah. to be taken by Dermot, and there's Bassett uh, being attended to uh, by the Port Melbourne, uh, by the Dandenong trainers. He was attended to by the Port Melbourne players earlier. There's his kick, down towards the centre wing, up a shinners, can't put it in, out of bounds it goes. 12-11-83 to 8-10-58, Port Melbourne in front in the grand final. A ball out of bounds on the centre wing, and there's Wright of Dandenong getting up. He doesn't knock it down. Harlan's there, knocks it away for Port Melbourne. Swan gets it forward to Kerr. Kerr went to hand pass it, then decides to kick it wildly towards Rasmussen running in. Out of bounds again. Well, certainly Dandenong in this quarter have played the best football they've played for the match. It's interesting, too, the Port Melbourne have uh, yet to kick a goal in this uh, third quarter, and it's been in progress 18 and a half minutes. There's uh, Colbert. Getting up, knocking the ball down for Port Melbourne. Kerr is there. Terry Reed picked up by Hainan. Hainan a hand pass to Holt. Holt in towards goal. Offline. Out of bounds on the fall.
Terry Reid, uh, Ted, and also uh, the uh, the big fellow uh, who's uh, playing on the ball right. I've given Danny Long a lot of more pace around the packs. Well, I have too, particularly Reid since he came on, and uh, by his remembering what he did last week, they fed the ball to him, and he's doing well too. There's Harland, who took the mark, driving it into full forward, port into attack, but Bill Thompson, what a magnificent player this fellow is. Thompson kicks the ball back again towards Shinners. Shinners has been a pretty good kick-getter too in this game. He gets a hand pass to Bassett. Bassett a hand pass to Wright. Lou Wright near the centre, putting Dandenong into attack. Miller leads out from full forward. Great play by Prophet. Knocks it back towards the centre. Hibbert's there. Gets his kick. Plays it wide towards Flaherty. Knocked away by George Allen. Good play. And the Port Melbourne defence has been magnificent today. Out of bounds on the Dandenong half forward line as Port Melbourne lead 83 to 58. Knocked down by Colbert. A chance here for Shane Malloy, who uh, kicks it to the flank. A beautiful pass. He finds Kerr. Kerr of Port Melbourne. Further downfield. And Bond is there. Bond now with plenty of pace. Playing the ball across this half-forward line and into the full-forward zone. It's over the head of Fred Cook. Josh is there. And a free kick against uh, Fred Cook. Waiting for the free kick to come up to uh, David Drosher, who uh, kicks it downfield to Harrington. Harrington's on the halfback line, went to play on, and just as well he didn't. All right, Harrington from centre half back now with Danny Nong 8 10 58. Port Melbourne 12 11 83. Here's the kick going up towards the half forward line. Allen went up, failed to take the mark. He bears in on the ball, can't break away with it. Malloy's the player in there for Port. He plays it in towards the centre of the ground. Coming up to meet it is Bassett. He couldn't control the ball. He just stood there and looked uh, well. He just stood there. And uh, here's a free kick. No, the umpire says dropping the ball. And the free kick will go against Bond, who looks flabbergasted. Right, Shinners now coming in from the half-back line. No one on the mark, so he can take the one bounce and then plays it the half-forward line. And Allen comes in to take the mark again. Oh, Dandenong in a lot of trouble across their half-forward line. Swan gets the ball. Crowd yell out holding the ball. Moving in here is... Uh, Colbert, he passes across to Kerr Kerr with a further hand pass up here to um, Bond, and Bond now from the right half forward flank, has the chance to uh, put it right up to the forward zone comes back here to Colbert Colbert can't uh, get a good hand pass in intercepted by Shinners, Shinners in a bit of trouble, but gets it out here uh, to Wright, and Wright now opens up the play with a long kick, and who's there but Allen he couldn't take the mark, Herman van der Beek couldn't get down and uh, it's Prophet who plays it out here towards the flank. Here's Hibbert in the race for the ball. Harlan coming down to meet Hibbert. Hibbert tried to put himself in position for a push in the back. Over he went. And now Harland is met here by... Oh, what for? He was met by Breeze. And the umpire's given the free kick against Breeze. And it will be taken uh, by the look of it by Harlan. Scores are reading. Dandenong 8-10-58. Port Melbourne 12-11-83. Here's Harlan now from the wing on the stand side of the ground. Plays it up towards that right forward pocket. Up they go. Forced down to the ground. Comes through here to be a hand pass by Christo. He puts it into the hands of Bond. Bond snap shoots for goal. And it's not a bad shot by Dorka, but No, it's across the face of them. And here's Rasmussen with a chance. He slipped and they're putting him in a lot of trouble, but he snap shoots and I think he's put it through. Yes, another goal to Port Melbourne. Their first for this quarter. They're now 13-11. One they've done today. And we have umpire Marcy now with the wide of the centre. Well, Dandenong's still in a lot of trouble. They're in trouble across the half-forward line and up in the forward zone. Frosty Miller, in my book, is uh, injured. And I think he's only had, what, one kick? One kick. And that was a free, wasn't it? All right, well, uh, there's Vanderbeek getting the knockout from the ruck. Players still battling away. No one able to break it in the clear. Swan was the player who was grabbed, but the umpire blows the whistle and has elected to ball it up again. And here we go again. Van der Beek runs in with it, and Van der Beek gets a big knockout, but he gets it to a Port Melbourne player again, Dermot. Dermot now sends it out towards a half-back line. Harland racing for it with Orchard. Orchard getting right down there with Harland tapping it away beautifully from Orchard, but then, unfortunately, for Port Melbourne, puts it over the line and out of bounds. And in on 8 10, 58, with Port Melbourne 13 11, a total of 89. It's Orchard getting the knockout, but it comes down here towards uh, Christo. He couldn't get away with the ball, goes through to Malloy. Malloy back here. 
and uh, this is Swan coming in. Swan now around towards Holt, and Holt takes the mark on the outer wing. So Holt from the outer wing position. Looks for the lead downfield. And he bangs it straight up towards that left half forward flank. Bassett staying behind, couldn't get the ball. And there's Stubbs who fumbled it. And uh, this allows Kerr to come in. Kerr snap shoots for goal. There's Cook about to take one over the head. And Bassett threw his head back in amazement then. Uh, Drosher. He just threw the head back and looked absolutely amazed. Now, Cook will be put on a very, very acute angle because he marked that really between the goal and behind post and it must have been about six inches in. Lining them up pretty deliberately. He runs around his mark, snap shoots for goal and hits the top of the post. So Port Melbourne move on to 13, 12, 90. We're dandy on on eight goals, ten, a total of 58, and we're into the time-on period at the 26-minute mark as we have a replay, Ted. Beautiful mark by Fred Cook, right at the end of the fingers. By play underway again, and it's up towards Van der Beek. Van der Beek, a kick onto the Dandenong half-forward line, over the head of Orchard, who is too slow to move back and reposition himself, and Ian Owen takes the mark, gives it across to Profit, Profit to the centre wing, and the mark taken here by Kerr, who handballs it back to the player coming through in Malloy. He plays it into the forward pocket, and the mark taken by Tony Hayden. Good teamwork, good use of the ball by Port Melbourne, and Hayden now, from the half-forward flank, puts the ball in towards Cook, And the picture tells the story there. Fred Cook right in front of goal. He's already kicked three. And let's watch the superb judgment again of Fred Cook. Now he's right in front. Kicking for goal number 14 for Port Melbourne. He's missed it. Port Melbourne, 13, 13, 91, and Dandy Dong, 8, 10, 58. The time on period in the third quarter, and the kickoff by Drosher, the fullback for Dandy Dong. Danny Hibbert, can't mark it, Bond is there. Port Melbourne are too fast to Harland. Harland into the pocket, Holt is on his own. Runs into an open goal now. Cook is there. And Port Melbourne... Took it out of the hands then of uh, his teammate in Rasmussen. Port Melbourne sewing the game up. 13-13 to 8-10. Freddie Cook has kicked three goals. He's missed it again. And Port Melbourne 13-14 to Danny Long 8-10. And Fred uh, not kicking straight. It's a wonder because he's got... Uh, the pier boots on. Well, that's a pretty uh, blustery wind up there, though, Don, and uh, I think this could uh, account for the, some of that bad kicking. Right, ball in play again. It's up near the centre wing position. Knocked away there by George Allen. No opportunity here for Flaherty, who was a star in the first quarter. Hasn't been very prominent since. Back to George Allen again. He's caught by Schoeners. Handballs it away. It comes to the half-forward line. Bond is there. He loses the ball to Danny Hibbert. Hibbert of Danny Dong putting the ball to the half-forward line. Over the head of the players there. Knocked away by Owen. Picked up by Dermott. Dermott of Port Melbourne. Uh, kicks it uh, defensively to the centre wing. And out of bounds again. Port Melbourne 13 14 and Dandenong 8 10. Almost three quarter time. Van der Beek in the ruck now for Dandenong. Knocks the ball down, doesn't palm it. It goes straight towards Swan. And out of bounds it goes. A push in the back. And the free kick will go to the Port Melbourne player Swan. Stubbs has gone to the fullback position and uh, Drosher has gone to uh, look after Hayden. Hayden up there, the ball hits uh, Kerr on the head. It runs to the boundary line with Holt running in. And out of bounds again on the Port Melbourne half forward line. They lead 92 to 58. Coming up to the 30 minute mark in the third quarter, almost three quarter time. Hayden versus Van der Beek in this ruck duel. Knocked down by Van der Beek. It comes towards Harrington who uh, gets the free kick. Play on says the umpire now. Where are the forwards for Dandy Dong? They're not there again. And an easy mark to George Allen. Malloy calls for it out on the centre wing and he'll take the mark. Downfield. 
Bond calls for it, but he decides to kick it towards Holt. The mark taken by Travis Pays. Bayon, says the umpire, bad place to kick it. Comes across to Drosher. Drosher of Dandy Dog in towards the centre. Hibbert's there. The ball knocked away by Swan. Hibbert picks it up now. Kicks it out towards Flaherty. He'll mark the ball on the half forward line. And Flaherty stands his ground. He's a long way from goal, about 75 metres out, but he's got the wind behind him and he should put it deep into attack. He's already kicked two, it's dropping short on this occasion. Knocked through for one point by Wharton, and it's three-quarter time. Incidentally, the attendance here would be an all-time record of 32,137, with gate takings of 29,329. Over 32,000 people here. Thanks, Russ. Record attendance for a VFA Grand Final. There's Stubbs now with a hand pass, and uh, Taylor knocks it down to Drusher. Drusher up towards the forward zone, and Paddy Flaherty has marked. Flaherty has marked within scoring range, about 40 metres out from goal. He's kicked two. He's kicked two goals, three so far. And he's lining them up pretty deliberately, kicking into the wind towards the Fitzroy Street end of the ground. Here we go on the way and he's kicked it into the man on the mark. He tries to recover, doesn't do so. And Port Melbourne open up the play. Rasmussen gets it. He goes for the hand pass, gets it across here to Swan. And Swan now race away. Bang! Down towards the half forward line. And the ball has been uh, marked here by Bond. Bond then gets the hand pass in. Will Swan get away with it? Yes, he gets through players. Puts it up in the air. Van der Beek comes up, can't get the ball. And there's a uh, uh, hand pass from Bond straight to Orchard. Orchard out towards Breeze. And Breeze has relieved, will relieve the pressure with a kick from the right back pocket. Breeze now has gone for the short pass to Thompson at centre half back. And Thompson will go back to take the kick. No, he's gone for the hand pass. Gets it to Bassett. Bassett breaks clear. Sends it up towards that centre half forward zone. An effortless mark taken now by Wharton. Wharton of Port Melbourne. He's right at centre half back. With Port Melbourne 13 14 92, Dandy Dong 8 11 59. Wharton skies it straight up in the air towards that centre half forward position. Up they fly for it. No, yes, it's a Port Melbourne mark. And it's Cook right in the middle of the pack. Look at Fred Cook's mouth, uh, Ted. Yes, that was that uh, bad knock he got early in the game, Phil, but it, uh, it hasn't deterred him at all because that was a magnificent mark by Fred Cook. Yes, this is a bad cut under uh, the bottom lip. As he comes in, puts the ball on its way, and it's swinging right oh. back. Was it touched? No, I don't think so. What's uh, The umpire says it's a free kick, and it will be taken by Ray Orchard. So that dispels any doubt that there may have been. With Port Melbourne 13, 14, 92, Dandy Dong 8, 11, 59. Orchard now will look around to see where to kick it, and he's decided to kick it out in front of the Morton stand. There it goes on its way up. They fly for it. And coming through here is Christo. Christo with a hand pass. Gets it to Cook. Snap shoots for goal. And again, he's hit the post. So Port Melbourne move on to 13-15-93 with Dandenong 8-11, a total of 59. Well, Port Melbourne uh, apparently at this stage cruising in. Orchard takes the kickoff, plays it to the half-back line. They set themselves. It goes over Stubbs' head and Hainan is the player to come in and take them up. Hainan now goes for the long kick downfield, hooks it in towards the pocket. Players wait for the bounce of the ball. Christo punches it out wide. Here's the chance now for Port. Bond's got the ball. He might end up with a free kick if they tackle him too high. He goes down to the ground. No one able to break it out into the open. The umpire blows the whistle. There is a free and it'll go to Travis Pays of Dandenong. Well, Pays not wasting any time. Hooks the ball, puts it straight to Owen. Owen now gets the pass. Two players, Rasmussen and his teammate out there in the Kerr. Neither player marked the ball. And this allows Flaherty to come in and play it round the wing towards Drosher. And Drosher reaches up to take a good mark over the top of Allen. Well, Drosher went to play on then, but he gets it up now in the direction of Pays. Up they go for it. Comes down into the hands of Malloy. Malloy now goes for the short pass. And he finds his teammate in Christo. He's been in a lot of play today too, Christo. Christo again with a short pass, gets it out to Rasmussen. Rasmussen goes up to pull it in. Rasmussen now a fair way out from goal. And don't forget our best player award today for the Puma bag, the pair of Puma boots. Also the backer bar with the two player chairs from Presidia and the $25 cash award from 4 and 20. That's Holt with the ball, screws it over the shoulder. It's high in the air, Cook waits for it. And Cook has taken the mark. 
A good mark, a good strong mark. Herman van der Beek says he got pushed out of the road, but that was a good strong mark by Fred Cook of Port Melbourne. Port Melbourne 13-15, 93, Dandenong 8-11-59. Well, as uh, we have the replay, the CUB replay of it, as we have the ball on its way, and uh, Port Melbourne, that was his fourth. Port Melbourne, 14, 15, 99, to Dandenong's 8, 11, 59. And Harrington's there. Well, they certainly didn't gain much with that pass, but now Harrington kicks it to the centre wing, and Hainan's there. But a free kick is going to be paid to Travis Pays, the captain and coach of the Dandenong side. Now, Pays is on the centre wing. Now, who's in position here for Dandenong? Nobody. And George Allen, one of the best players on the ground, takes the mark and kicks it back to the centre wing, where Dermott takes the mark, a hand pass across to Kerr. Kerr on the half-forward line to Hainan. And a Port Melbourne mark. Port Melbourne doing it well. In towards the full forward zone. Cook is there. Orchard knocks it away. Picked up by Holt. Into an open goal, and Port Melbourne wrap the game up. Five, Danny Long, 59, in towards the Port Melbourne goal again. And it's another one. Let's watch that on CUB slow-mo. Picked up there by Bond. And Bond putting it into attack, and there you see uh, Rasmussen taking the ball and putting it through for his third goal for Port Melbourne. Now, uh, what a great victory coming up to Port. Well, that's about the quickest goal I've seen to kick from a, uh, a ball up there, Don. What that took probably around about seven to eight seconds for that to go through from the centre bounce. Umpire Marcy back in the centre. The Port Melbourne fans have gone mad here as they sense this uh, very good win coming up. Port Melbourne going on to take out the Premiership. Lance Taylor takes the ball for Dandy Long, gets it to Hibbert. Hibbert uh, loses possession to Ian Owen. Picked up now by Hibbert. Hibbert towards Flaherty. Flaherty knocks it to the ground. Reed is there too, taken by Dermott. Dermott to Swan. The teamwork of Port Melbourne is uh, pretty impeccable here. To Malloy, a hand pass to Bond. Bond on the half-forward line. A big kick to the full forward position. And Fred Cook is there. Gets his kick in towards goal under a lot of pressure. And one point. Fred Cook has played a wonderful and courageous game today. The victim of pretty heavy handling in the second quarter. He stuck to his task and has been a magnificent player. They kick off by Ray Orchard towards Stubbs on the halfback line. Hainan's there, knocks the ball away and gives a free kick away. And Stubbs will take it. Port Melbourne 16-16, Dandenong 8-11 in the grand final. Down to the centre wing, and Drosher there appealing for the mark. He pays the mark. Dummies a hand pass and loses possession to Malloy. It comes out here towards Tony Hainan. Hainan seemed to throw the ball across to Malloy. Malloy putting Port Melbourne into attack. Knocked away by Van der Beek. Taken by Harland. Harland plays the ball in front of him on the Port Melbourne half-forward line. Goes one way, back onto his right foot, a short pass into the pocket, and he finds Rasmussen. Rasmussen has already kicked three goals. He's not that far out. It's a good kick. That's his fourth goal. Port Melbourne, 17-16. Dandenong, 8-11. And here's Philip Gibbs. Right, Don. Now, uh, here's the ball out on the wing. Paddy Flaherty plays it up towards the half-forward line. Malloy came in to try and mark it and then dribbled it over the line and out of bounds. Well, Parrott has come on the field, replacing Christo. Christo, who's played a very good game today for Port Melbourne. Then it comes once again. Up they go for it, and Owen reached over to get the knockout, but in the meantime, the umpires picked a free kick out of it to Hainan of uh, Port Melbourne. Christo getting a round of applause as he comes off the ground. I'm very happy about that too. Well, there goes the kick towards Travis Pays. He fails to take the mark. Then coming in behind him is Barrett to get his first kick in the grand final. Sends it down towards Cook. And Cook has come in to take another strong mark. He's just turned around and gone bang and put it through for another one to take Port Melbourne to 18-16. 124. That was his fifth. Dandenong 8-11, a total of 59. Well, he's put in a great performance as we watch his CUB slow-mo replay here. This where's Barrett coming on in place of Jim Christo. And you see Fred Cook take this mark. 
well attended by Orchard, but uh, then Fred Cook just turning around and nonchalantly putting it through for his fifth goal and Port Melbourne's 18th. Well, what is it? Ten goals, five, the difference at the moment in Port Melbourne's favour. And they've been playing 12 and a half minutes into the final quarter. There it comes towards Hibbert, playing his 100th game. Got Helvin not in possession, and Hibbert will get the free kick. So now Hibbert comes in, puts the ball on its way towards that half-forward line. Up goes Drosher. He fails to take the mark. Comes through to Ian Owen. Owen now gets grabbed pretty high, but the umpire allows the play to continue. He plays it towards Harlan. The bounce beats Harlan. Tapped down into the hands of Reed, and Reed streaks away. He gets the pass to Taylor. Taylor slipped over as he came in for the mark, and a pick-up here by Flaherty. Flaherty now runs in towards goals, puts it on its way, and he's put it through for a goal to Dandenong to take them to nine goals, 11. 64, that was his third. Port Melbourne, 18-16, a total of 124. The replay of this one. And you'll see Reed go get it down to Flaherty. There's Flaherty coming in now. And he'll line them up and put it through for a goal to Dandenong, but they're in a hopeless position. It's going to be interesting, uh, Ted, for your best player award for the uh, Puma bag and boots and... Also the back of bar and clear chairs and the 4 and 20 award. Well, there's been some very good players in this grand final here today, Phil. Quite a lot of them. Out from both sides, too. And here we go with umpire Marcy bouncing it. Van der Beek up in the ruck again, but uh, a bit too late. As Harlan now pushes the ball along in front of him. There's Hibbert getting offloaded. Harlan underneath them dribbles the ball out. And the show for Kerr to try and get it away. Kerr dribbles it along the ground. Taylor gets a push in the back. And Taylor will get the free kick. So Taylor with a pass across to Hibbert. Hibbert nearly found himself in a bit of trouble, but gets it across here to Pays, and Pays comes in to take the mark. Pays looks for the lead. He goes for the pass now to Shinners. And Shinners moves downfield, puts the ball on its way. It'll drop short to Wharton. And Wharton got the attention in the back of the neck, and he'll get the free kick. So he's got the ball in the last line of defence. And we're halfway through the last quarter, coming into the 15-minute mark. Well, 15 minutes of play left to go with Port Melbourne, 18-16-124. Dandenong, 9-11, 65. A short pass towards Reed. Reed gets the hand pass. Oh, tried one to Drosher. Did it too quickly and uh, didn't uh, direct it at all. There's Thompson now with another mark in defence. Actually, he's right in the centre. How many kicks? 13th. And it comes through towards Breeze. Breeze to Flaherty. Flaherty tried to take the mark. Allen right behind him. And Allen does a bit of shepherding while um, Owen came in. And Owen fails to uh, hold the ball into play. Van to Beek up in the ruck. And he gets the knock out. But where does it go? To Allen. And Allen turns straight back into Breeze. Holding the ball, says the umpire. And Breeze will get the free kick. Well, from Dandenong at the moment, it's token play. He's kicked one goal, puts the ball on its way, and the wind might drag it around. It's through for another goal to Dandenong. They move on to 10 goals, 11, 71, with Port Melbourne, 18, 16, a total of 124. Port Melbourne, 18, 16, 124, Dandenong, 10, 11, 71. Well, they now pick the points competition. The total now is 189. And the nearest to it at the present time is 225 by J.M. Chenery of uh, Whittington. But it won't stay at 189, I'm sure. Anyway, boundary umpire about to put it back in again down in the left forward pocket. And a knockout uh, secured then by the big fellow in the culvert. Kick by Pays towards that left forward pocket. Wharton tried to mark it. Wright trying to get through. Gets a push in the back and Wright will get the free kick. 18-16 Port Melbourne. Dandenong 10-11. Wright has kicked one goal. He's on a pretty acute angle. And the wind will be across the flight of the ball. He's kicked one so far. And put, kicked a point. He's put it through for a point. So that takes Dandenong on to 10-12. Port Melbourne 18-16. Wharton again with the kickoff towards the half back line. There's Drosher taking the mark. Gets a hand pass to Breeze. And Breeze having trouble handling it. Can he dribble it to Drosher? He did. Drosher will get the short kick in. Up towards Pays. 
Pace seems to take a year to wind up. He gets grabbed when not in possession, and Pace gets the three. Here's Don Hyde. Travis Pays, the Dandenong captain and coach, who hasn't been a dominant player today, has the ball on the half-forward line about 45 metres from goal. And Dandenong at 10-12, Port Melbourne 18-16. There's the kick in towards goal. Up they fly. And it's a Port Melbourne mark. Malloy has got it. What I meant by that comment, Ted, was that I don't think Pace has been an effective player. I'm not uh, concerned about how many kicks he's, he's had. He's had 20 kicks on the mat so far, Don. I realise that. But I still don't believe that he's been uh, an effective player as a captain and coach for Danny Long today. That's your opinion and you stick to it, Don. I'm going to stick to it. Up to the half-back line. And uh, Danny Long keep the ball and attack through Drosher. Drosher now over the top of it. But it comes away to Rasmussen and Port Melbourne clear it back towards the centre wing. And over here we see Wes Barrett give it to uh, Harlem, to Kerr. And Kerr on the half-forward line. Port looking good again. In towards Fred Cook, but good play as Ray Orchard comes out, knocks it away. Cook cleverly gets it across here towards Kerr. Kerr's kick is not a good one. It's out of the direction of uh, Bond. Playing the ball in front of him is Brian Shinners. Harland is there too. Harland knocks it out of the pack to Bond. Bond is clear. Kicks it into an open goal. And he's put it through. Port Melbourne 19-16 and Dandenong 10-12. That's his second goal. Well, let's watch the CFE slow mo of that one, where we see uh, Kerr, that was one, getting that kick away then. That's Bond number 13. He's the player that will finish with the ball, as we see Brian Sinners there in front of Harlan. There's Bond getting it down, breaking away, with plenty of place still left in him at the concluding stage of this match, and he puts it through for four points. A 20-minute mark of the last quarter of the grand final and Port Melbourne are romping home now to take the 1976 flag. Van der Beek getting up, knocks the ball down, doesn't direct it well. It comes towards uh, Hibbert now, who puts himself in and gets grabbed, and he'll take the free. Danny Hibbert, the Liston Trophy winner, in the centre of the ground and a chance to put uh, Danny Dong into attack. To the full forward zone, up as Holt, can't pull it in. Flaherty behind the pack, waits for it. Lance Taylor almost through his mouth guard of the umpire. As the free kick is given against him, it'll go to David Holt. 20 and a half minutes gone in the final quarter. David Holt, the Port Melbourne player on their half-back line, a big uh, torpedo punt kick, putting the ball over the centre wing. Port coming into attack again, knocked away from Hayden. It comes out towards Colbert, number 28. He can't get it, coming through Harland. Number nine in the picture, over the line it goes. Port Melbourne are good players today, and their teamwork has been very, very good. On the centre wing, the ball being put back into play. Van der Beek, number 23. The Dandenong Ruckman, 28, is Colbert of Port Melbourne. Van der Beek knocks it down on this occasion to Breeze. Breeze's kick comes out towards Hibbert. Hibbert on the half-forward line. Malloy tackles him. Hibbert knocks the ball forward. And then Harlan comes in. And it's out of bounds again on Dandenong's half-forward flank. Port Melbourne, 19-16. Dandenong, 10-12. A very big crowd here today. A lot of the people, of course, are leaving the ground in anticipation of this easy win to Port Melbourne. But this ground at the start of the game was jammed to capacity. There's still a big crowd here. Waiting for the ball to be put back into play. I think they've lost it. No, the boundary umpire waiting for uh, some young spectators to uh, get back over the fence. Port Melbourne with the 76 flag well and truly in their keeping. And the boundary umpire featuring very large at the moment over there. Now play gets underway again. Van der Beek knocks it down. A uh, good knockdown to Taylor. Taylor, the Dandenong Rover, into the forward pocket position. Dandenong into attack here. Wright is there. Knocked away by Holt. Knocked away by Owen. Out towards uh, Danny Hibbert. He can't get it. Taken by his teammate Breeze. Breeze slips. Regains his feet. Kicks it into the full forward zone. Flaherty's there. Can't quite keep the ball in play. Out of bounds in the Dandenong forward pocket. 22 minutes gone in the last quarter, and Port Melbourne 19 16. Dandenong 10 12. Up is Van der Beek again, knocking the ball down to Taylor. Lance Taylor, a snapshot over his head, a good shot as he was falling, but one point. Dandenong now 10 13, and Port Melbourne 19 16. The Dandenong Rovers haven't done a bad job today when you look at them, uh, Don, go Chris Breeze and Lance Taylor. The, the Port Melbourne pair, young Graham Bond and Jimmy Crusoe, started off the game very well, but these two I thought have taken over from them. The ball back to the centre wing now, taken by Kerr. Kerr gets a short kick at the ball, not a good one, towards West Barrett. He came on uh, in this last corner, showing plenty of pace, a left foot kick into the full forward zone, and it's a Port Melbourne mark. George Allen, who's been moved to the forward zone, is within kicking distance. And what a great uh, cap off to a wonderful game. If George Allen could kick a goal, he's been a match winner on the halfback flank. 
And now on the forward line, he kicks it towards goal. Offline, he's a better back man than he is a forward. One point to Port Melbourne. And I would think, uh, Ted, uh, that the Dandenong players are hoping for that siren to go. Yes, it can't uh, come quick enough for them, Don. They started some spirited effort at the start of this last quarter, but they could see that Port Melbourne, I think they've acknowledged it too, that Port Melbourne is by far the better side. Danny Hibbert in the play now, the Liston Trophy winner for 1976. He plays the ball down to his captain and coach, Travis Pays. He can't uh, keep his feet. It comes to Breeze. Breeze uh, taken over the boundary line by uh, Dermot. And out of bounds, the two players and the ball. Port Melbourne 1917 and Dandenong 10 13 in the 1976 grand final. Van der Beek up in the ruck again. Brian Shinners takes it, gives it to Breeze. Breeze putting Dandenong into attack over the head of Drosher. Up is Malloy. Behind him is Wharton. Wharton dummies nicely. And then a left foot kick puts the ball to the Port Melbourne half forward line. A player on the ground there got a bit of a knock. It's uh, Lou Wright. The ball comes back towards number 33 here. Lance Taylor, the Dandenong Rover. A hand pass to Herman Van der Beek. Van der Beek, a hand pass to Terry Reid, who came on as a reserve in the, at the start of the third quarter. Into the full forward zone. Frosty Miller takes it. A hand pass to Lou Wright. Wright within kick distance towards the Dandenong goal there's nobody home and an easy mark taken by Ian Owen 24 minutes gone in the last quarter as Ian Owen kicks the ball back to a lead from Bond and Bond doesn't let him down now the Port Melbourne teamwork uh, in the evidence again as Bond showing plenty of pace runs around the center wing a hand pass towards uh, Tony Hayden Hayden has the ball taken away by Bill Thompson. Good play by Thompson. He gets a short kick at it. Back in towards the centre wing. And uh, Travis Pays, the Dandenong captain and coach, takes the mark on that half-forward flank position. Don, how would you like to um, be the gentleman from uh, Whittington, I think it is? He's selected 225 points. That's Mr J.M. Chennery. Uh, because at the moment, the total is what? 204. 204. Uh -huh. So uh, he's, in the, he's right in the hot box. Anyway... Here's the play, back near the centre of the ground. Up they fly for it. No one able to take the mark. Comes out towards Chris Breeze. Breeze trying to trap the ball. Having trouble in handling it, but plays it around the flank position. He gets bowled over after he's kicked it. And the free kick will be taken by Danny Hibbert up on the half-forward flank. Well, Hibbert now goes for Taylor, but Taylor won't quite get to it. Holt comes up to meet the ball. Taylor scrags him, but then comes out, gets pushed in the back, and Taylor will get the free kick. Landed on 10 13 73, Port Melbourne 19 17, 131. And there's about five minutes of play left, I'd say. And there's Harlan with a touch of the cramp as he passes across towards Flaherty. Flaherty back here. Uh, towards Breeze. Now Breeze comes in from exactly the same position as where Taylor was to shoot up towards goals. Wright went up, failed to take the mark. Comes through to Dermot of Port Melbourne. Dermot out towards the flank. There's Barrett moving into it. And Barrett now racing away. He's in wide open territory. He can have half a dozen bounces if he wants to. He had four and then goes for the long kick downfield. And who was it? Fred Cook again right on the boundary line to come in and take the mark. So, Cook, look at the kids um, around Fred Cook there. The hero as he's kicked five goals so far. Kicking towards the lake end of the ground. And it's on its way. Goal umpire goes across, but it'll land uh, beside the goal square. And it was Alan kicking it over his head. But it's pushed down to the ground and taken away here by Orchard. Orchard of Dandenong puts it high in the air towards centre half back. Up goes Shinners. He pushes it down to the ground, but coming through is Malloy. Malloy bowls it up towards the full forward zone and puts it through for another point. Where's that? I was going to say something dog out there again, but it's there. With Port Melbourne 1918, 132, Dandenong 10 13 73. Right, it comes towards the half back line and Hibbert moves across to take the mark. Hibbert now gets his kick in towards the wing position on the stand side of the ground. Comes through towards Breeze, a pick up by Holt. Holt plays it back towards the forward zone and punched away by Hibbert for a throw in. Hibbert's had 27 kicks so far today. But it hasn't appeared to have been that effective. Here he comes in with another kick now. Plays it wide at the centre of the ground. They set themselves, knocked away from Drusher. Moving in is Dermot. Dermot under pressure goes for a long hand pass and puts it out of bounds. Landing on 10 13 73, Port Melbourne 1918, 132. <laughs>
Well, the dog's still there. He might get it right down his throat in a minute. And the umpire letting play continue and has elected to give a free kick for Melbourne's way. And it will be taken by Swan. Well, he, the dog ran over the mark. <laughs> so Swan will go back to take the kick. Well, the dog's had lunch, so he's decided to go off the ground. All right. Kids are getting down in front of the Port Melbourne race. And there it goes up towards the centre forward zone. Thompson comes in. Thompson being bustled down here, but uh, ends up with the ball. Allen of Port Melbourne trying to take it away, but umpire Marcy comes in for a ball up once again. Down on the forward zone of Port Melbourne, they're 19-18, Dandenong 10-13, a total of 73. This is Taylor, who hasn't given up all day, gets the kick in, but puts it straight into the hands of Holt. Holt now goes for the kick across towards the uh, centre-half uh, forward position, and it's Malloy who comes in to take it. Malloy now plays it wide of centre-half forward to Heenan. Uh, but uh, moving in here is Van der Beek. Uh, one out battle with the big fellows, but it comes back in the direction of Terry Reid. Right behind Reid is Dermot, but uh, Reid gets the better of the duel there, plays it to Drosher, and Drosher has taken it. Drosher hand passes to Reid. Reid coming downfield with Frosty Miller making a limping lead. Drosher passes to Miller. Now Miller turns around, left foots it towards goal, and what's he done? Put it through for he knocked the policeman's hat off. Dead eye dick. Right. He's put it through for one point, so that takes Danding on, on to 75 points, is against Port Melbourne's 132. And there's um, a young fellow in a bit of trouble, dives over the fence into the crowd here. And play has uh, been held up a bit. Holt was about to come up and take the kick off, and the dog's running over his mark again. All right, there it goes out towards Travis Pays, who has it punched away. Comes back in the direction of Malloy, and uh, Prophet moves up. He couldn't handle it. Comes back to Malloy once again, and Malloy now will open up the play. Play it down towards the centre-half forward position. Up goes Thompson to pull in the mark in defence as we take it to Don High. Well, Bill Thompson, a grand defender today, gets the ball out to the uh, centre wing, and eventually it's taken here by Chris Breeze. And he gets it forward. The uh, ball came from Bassett to him, and then it goes to uh, Hibbert uh, from Breeze. He's across to Drosher, Drosher to the full forward zone, and Lou Wright takes the mark. The dying minutes of the game, Port Melbourne with a 76 uh, premiership, only about a minute away, I would say. And what a wonderful performance it's been. Lou Wright, right in front of goal. There's his kick, offline, he's missed it. <laughs> and there it is, it's all over. And Port Melbourne premiers for 1976 PFA First Division. Right, well, there it is. Port Melbourne winning the 1976 Grand Final, defeating Dandenong. Port Melbourne, 1918, a total of 132. And Dandenong, 10 goals, 15.